this video is going to show you how we made a epoxy inlay and a cutting board and we gave it away as a, cut, uh, as a Christmas gift. You can buy plenty of high quality cutting boards online or you can build one yourself. We built an ingrained cutting board using the plans from the Wood Whisperer. We will put a link to the plans for his cutting board in the description below. You can download vector art from the internet to create your inlay picture or you can freehand it yourself. Once you have the image created as an SVG file, import the file into easel. If your inlay will be the same width as the width of your bit, simply do an on path outline of about 3 sixteenths of an inch deep. If it is not the same width, use a pocket operation. If the edges of your cutting board are round, or if you don't have a good corner to the zero off of, consider moving the center of your image to zero zero coordinate in the lower left. This way, you can zero your machine to the center of your cutting board and have it cut from there. The linked easel project I'm using has my art centered at zero zero like this. Make sure to set your material and bit size correctly in ESO before starting. If you have two different types of wood in your project, pick the harder wood so that the feed rates are more conservative. Consider doing a test run and some cheap plywood first so that you don't ruin an expensive cutting board. Go ahead and colorize your epoxy. Use dyes, powders, or even acrylic paint, like we did. We used a food safe epoxy called Art Risen. Remember to mix very th thoroughly. Then use an industrial syringe to fill in the inlay p with epoxy, and then let it cure for 24 hours. Sanding, sanding, and more sanding. My dad spent lots of time sanding the stuff in the garage, but he tells me good things takes time, so I think it was worth it. And now for some epoxy tips and tricks. Um, one of the first things I did, I'm, I'm doing some epoxy inlays on a cutting board, and it's an ingrained cutting board, there's lots of different woods. So I had some scrap material left over. I went ahead and cut different slots and shapes and I tried some experiments with different pigmentation in the epoxy, um, different amounts of hardener and resin. Um, I tried different finishes on the on the uh, cutting board so to keep make it easier to sand the epoxy away. And so what I want to share with you is what I found to be the sort of the best scenario at this point. Um, I'll start with the finish. So one thing that I learned. Um, I'm not sure how much this helps, but I, in my head it, it makes sense. Um, is I went ahead and sealed the wood with a spray lacquer first, and then after it was sealed, I took some um, just some Minwax paste finishing wax and went ahead and finished that over here. And that just gives the wood a little bit more seal, so that when the epoxy fills in the holes that you mill out. Um, the surface part that you're going to be sanding down will be sealed a little bit more and the epoxy won't be sticking to that as much and won't be biting into the wood as much. Um, another thing that I learned was um, I tried a few different things with uh, colorants, dyes and things um, and you find people online experiment with all sorts of things to color them. Um, I'm using this epoxy right here, it's called Art Resin. Uh, it's great stuff, it dries very very clear, it's made a lot, most people use it on pictures and arts and things like that. Um, what what I um, found was that you can use um, 
just a few drops of of like acrylic paints and you don't need much you need very little so like little acrylic art paint sets um, I did buy some expensive um, colorants specifically for crafting resin casting craft resin opaque colorants um, but I had already done all my tests with these acrylic versions, and since I want to make sure it comes out the same way my test came out, I'm not going to use these. I'm going to use these. But you can do this too. This is just more expensive. But I found just a few drops of, uh, of an acrylic paint inside the epoxy mixture. It goes a long way, and the colors come out just fine. Okay, a couple of things about tools that I've found are useful. Um, one is when you go to mix, um, I've found with this art resin, after playing with all different types of mixtures, going back to the instructions, they say it's very important that the parts of resin and hardener be exactly equal to 50-50. And I've, after experimenting, I found that to be exactly true. If you get any deviation across from one-to-one -one mixture, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, cure correctly and it gets sticky and things. So... Uh, so that means that you need to be able to measure stuff accurately. So a couple things that I found one is that these little um, plastic condiment uh, Containers are really good for measuring out, you know, you can kind of measure by level also you can put stuff in and, and I'll talk about these in a second, but you can easily extract stuff out of them And they're just they're just handy because you can pour with them. They're they're nice You can also use like plastic cups. I would take a plastic cup and cut it shorter so they're just like the bottom off of it. That works pretty well too if you've got a lot of plastic cups hanging around. But if you're looking to get a few things, um, these little small plastic condiment containers work really well. The next thing that I'll say is um, if you're going to be putting these into some CNC inlays, um, having an industrial syringe like this, this is a 20 milliliter syringe. Um, this is fantastic because you can put the, the nozzle on and you've got a... It's, it's very precise, but it's big enough that you can, you know, push out the epoxy uh, at a decent rate. Um, and it'll also let you precisely measure. So if you want to, uh, you know, take this and pull out exactly so many milliliters, um, and that'll help you get that 50-50 mixture just right. So um, some nice containers to put your stuff in. And these industrial syringes, I would say, are uh, something that if you're going to be doing this, Go ahead and invest in. Okay, so first tip is um, besides the tools is make sure you have some loose paper towels already torn off the roll because inevitably there'll be drips and things and you won't have time or enough hands to get them off the roll. So have some of those already done there. The next thing is when you add your colorant, whether it's acrylic or dye or, or powder or whatever. Um, Instead of mixing your two-part epoxy first and then adding the color, what I like to do is just pour the resin first and then put your color in. That way, as you're mixing it and you're trying to get the color just right, the reaction hasn't already started. Uh, so I, I prefer to just, um, just measure out my resin portion, which is what I have here. This one's going to be black. So I'm going to measure out some black here. Now, this one is for a pretty large... Um, uh, inlay so I need three big drops but I'm for most people you probably need not much paint at all now you can see as I mix it very quickly that color will spread out amongst the whole mixture okay once you've got your resin and your hardener mixed and you've measured them very carefully for whatever the ratio is that you're working with Another thing you've got to do is you've got to mix very thoroughly. So, I you know most people think they've mixed it thoroughly, but you've got to really stir it for quite a while to make sure that ever, all the pieces of resin touch hardener to start the reaction. You don't want anything that. So, now once you do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up my industrial syringe. I'm going to take the uh, little needle off because it sucks up a little bit better and put that in there and load it up I 
like that. And I'm going to take your towel, wipe off the excess so I don't drip all over my workpiece. Like that. Okay. I'll put my needle back on. Now, now that I've got sort of a precision applicator, I'm going to start loading this into my CNC channel. I've got two colors, so uh, they got the outside is going to be in black. So I'm just going to go once around with a slow speed. All right, so once I've went all the way around, keep a little pad or something nearby that you can dap any excess. So once I went all the way around, I'm going to go again. You have to fill this thing up slightly over level because what's going to happen is after you put it in, it as it reacts, it's going to expand, but then it's going to contract and it's going to suck in. And you need this to be above the level of the surface so you can sand it down, which means that you have to fill it with a little bit of a meniscus on the top. So. After I went all the way around once, I'm going to now start filling it back up with a second layer. So these are a few other inlay projects that I did. I updated my, um, well, you get, these are the finished uh, cutting boards, um, whoops, upside down, which came out pretty nice. Um, epoxy came out good. The little red star came out pretty good. I was happy with that. And I also... Um, Upgraded the poker card box project that I done a while back to add in. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a clear epoxy um, over these cards, and uh, it comes out looking really, really nice, like glass. Um, that's that art resin epoxy comes out really, really clear. So um, I made a couple of those poker card projects. Just upgraded them a bit. I changed a few things on this project. I added. Uh, barrel hinges this time. I m took more out of the material and less out the bottom so that the weight would be e more even, a few things like that. But overall, I think it came out pretty good. So, anyway, the epoxy um, one lesson learned I had on this was um, these playing cards apparently are a little bit more, or I guess, less dense maybe than the epoxy. So over time, they would float up to the top, and I had to keep pushing them down very gently and letting the epoxy set. And luckily, I got it to push down just before it cured tight. What I should have done was just put a drop of super glue in each corner of these and just glue them down so they wouldn't float. And then I think everything would have been perfect. Just a small little drop on the corners of super glue, I think, would have did it. But lesson learned for another time. Thank you for watching our video and good luck with your epoxy inlays. This is showing how my, this video is showing that we did a cutting board with the epoxy inlay. This video is showing how we did this is a video for this video is going to show you how to make... No, that's not it.